So why people don't succeed? Why people don't succeed? I want to share a story with you many years ago when I first started learning about Kung Fu. And I went to Chinatown and I signed up for a Wing Chun class. And I saw my Sifu and I, I paid the dudes. I think it's like $50 or something like that. And I paid the money. At the time I had a lot of free time, so I was attending the class four or five times a week. Okay. So I attended the first class and Sifu was like, okay, I'm gonna teach you some stuff. Pay attention. I said, okay. And he was teaching me Ming Chun Gong Fu, he was teaching me called the, the strict punch. Okay, the strict punch. And I was like, good, okay, you practice. And I practiced in front of the mirror. Okay, let's do strict punch. I said, Sifu, 30 minutes of this shit, right? <laughs> okay, okay, good. Now, strict punch, punch the bag. Okay. Okay, do that. And then, okay, and then do it in front of the mirror. Okay. And then do it in front of the, like a wall back. Okay, do that. Like an hour and a half. So that was the first lesson. Okay, next day I, I go back and say, Sifu, what's new? Strict punch. Shit, this is class two. I don't, I don't, I got it. I, I practiced an hour and a half. Straight punch. Okay. Now I'm half asking it because I'm, I'm getting bored. He said, no, 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 no. Put, put your heart into it. I said, okay, okay. I'm practicing. I'm practicing. Okay, all right. I think I got it. Third class, I went back. See, Fu, show me some fancy move. I want to do what they are doing because all my, all my classmates, right? Straight punch. And I went back and I practiced strict punch. One month, the first month, I learned nothing else but the strict punch. And I thought, damn, this is a scam. <laughs> <laughs> like my, my seafood takes my, take my, my 50 bucks, didn't teach me shit. What the hell is this? I want to learn what they do. How come you're teaching me this basic shit? And my seafood was like, okay, put on the headgears, put on the gloves. I want you to spar with your Si Heng, which is your senior in the class, Si Heng. So, okay, and the senior, the, my classmate has been practicing learning Wing Chun for about six months or so, okay? So he knows a lot of different moves. So I said, okay, we're gonna, you're gonna do three minutes of sparring, full contact. You're trying to knock him out, he's trying to knock you out, okay? So I said, you ready? It's the first time, I was so nervous. I said, oh my God, it's gonna get hurt. What happens, I'm gonna get knocked out. My God, he knows 10 moves, I know one move. Nothing else, right? So anyway, we start, I just, boom, I start blast him to the center line, just like that. In two minutes, he was on the ground. And my seat was asking me, so now, Dan, what do you think of the strict, strict punch? I said, pretty damn good. <laughs> Cause I don't know anything else. Whatever he does, I just strict blast. <laughs> he's trying to kick, I strict blast. He's going back, I'm just one, one thing. I was like, I don't know, this is awesome. And he said, do you know that the strict punch is the fundamental of our art? Everything builds on that. And then he asked my Si Heng, you've been learning for six months, what do you think of that strict punch? <sighs> Gotta work on the fundamentals got to work on the fundamentals. You notice a lot of what I share with you, really, you, you, you boil it down what I do, it's maybe 10 or 12 things. It's not 100 things. Maybe not even 10 or 12 things, maybe eight, nine things. And it just, in a way, I'm saying the same thing, but from different angle. It's really the same thing, but maybe new, distinctions, new refinement, but really only that's what I focus on and that's what I master and that's what I keep working on. That's what I keep working on, right? And I'll give you an example, again example. And I need to talk two volunteers here. Yeah. I talk to them. Let's do Jack, yeah. Jack, yeah. K-1? Hey, one, I'm okay, one. Jack versus Kayvon. Yeah, we're just Kayvon. <laughs> <laughs> Round one. Round one. All right. Wait, I put my money out. Yeah, that's it, that's it. <laughs> Kayvon? <laughs> oh, Jack. Uh, just come on up. And... No, I put it on. No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. 
no, 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 ask the camera. Just, just yeah. come, just come. Just come here, just come. And so, if you think in terms of, well, actually, I'll, I'll need some protection stuff first. Oh, wow. Now, um, cave on, maybe cave on. You, you can wear this. Now, I, I, as, now, as far as I know, this is indestructible, indestructible, as far as I know. Now, he, after this, now, now after this, he might be the one eye closer. I'm not so sure. <laughs> I'm not so sure, but we can wait. And I'm not with libel, and I'm not responsible for, yeah, this is uh, totally not it. Okay, it's good, okay. No. So, so what I'm saying is, so, so, so last time I was talking about how when someone joins the IC or any type of learning, that you focus on what to do, what are the techniques, what are the techniques, what are things I need to do, and then you have later on if you are, you are going to the next level, we're talking about what kind of thinking? What kind of thinking? Critical thinking, right? Why you do certain moves, right? Why you do certain things. And that's level two, that's nice, but that's not it. That's not it. So let me, let me demonstrate so you can put that on. So imagine if I was to explain to you, let's say the finger jab <laughs> to the eyes is the most effective weapon and technique in martial art. Why is that? Because it's the longest weapon against the nearest target. That makes sense, right? The why makes sense. Okay, I don't care how powerful he is, how strong his muscle is, he can, you know, do dumbbell curl with his eyes, <laughs> right? Everyone is the same. So it makes sense, yes? Yeah. It makes sense. So now, what I want you to do, Jack, I want you to poke his eyes. Poke his eyes. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to block it to the best of ability. I'm going to rip my jacket, okay. That's okay. Okay, just block it. Don't move around. So stay in the same spot. Now, I want you to, so I share with you. Yeah. Jabbing the eye is the most effective, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay yeah. Watch, watch, wait, wait, wait. Now you would do your best yeah. to jab his eyes. Okay. He would do his best to block it. So okay. the technique, we all got it. What's the technique? Jab. Finger jab. Okay, now we'll try a couple of times. So go ahead, just once, and then wait, you do it again. Try again. Okay, one. Okay. Now try again. Okay, good. One more. Okay, stop. <laughs> The technique is the technique. It's the same technique. Yeah. Now watch. I want jab the eye. Oh. <laughs> Again. That's not the technique. Okay. Okay. You don't have a chance. Don't jab the eye. Okay. Try again. Okay. Try again. Okay. So the technique is the same. Yeah. What's the difference? Faster. Execution, more practice, accuracy, timing, distance, it's a finger jab. So it's not just the knowledge or the information of the finger jab, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, it's, the, what, it's the capability. It is the capability. So it's not enough to just understand it, yeah. you guys have to practice. This is thousands and thousands of hours, right? When you do it so many times, even though he knows, okay, I'm gonna, don't worry, I'm gonna attack, it's not gonna happen, right? Right? That first one was good. That was good? A mom of applause, a mom of applause. You have two eyes, right? Two eyes, okay. Good job, good job, good job. So what do you guys do at the like, Poke out his eyes. We fuck the duck and we poke each other's eyes. Our unique selling proposition. Now you have a pitch for our next PG. That's right, that's right. This is what we do. We had small hands. So getting results, <laughs> look at getting results actually doesn't take much time at all. Doing the thing doesn't take much time. It's not getting results that takes all the fucking time. It's not getting the results that takes, but how do you get results? You got to? You gotta practice. Now how do you practice, let's say, not in martial art terms, but how do you practice in business? 
Mm -hmm. Let's say if we're going to do telephone sales, how do you practice? Role play. Role play. Do role play. That's practice. Yeah, research. If you're doing presentation, how do you practice? Just like Victoria, Toastmasters, you practice. You can watch someone present and present 10,000 times. It does, you pick up some piece and bits and pieces, but there's no good if you don't practice. Because you have not developed their capability. You have not developed their capability. And that's why once you have the technique down, you understand the why. Now if you have the attributes behind the technique, it doesn't, it doesn't take long to get results at all. But what most people do sometimes, they keep looking for, give me another technique. Right? Just like I told my seafood, give me another technique. There has to be another one. No, there, there has to be. Your finger has to be some strange, weird angle that makes it faster. No, you just practice many, 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 many times. Many, many, many times. Bruce Lee had this quote. I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. One kick? 10,000 times. Don't need fancy moves. That's why simplicity, you don't, need, you don't need fancy moves. PMP, fundamental. Take away selling. Closing on the phone. Influence. You don't need fancy techniques. It will work. It will work. If you're equipped to be a capability gatherer, what is it? Capability gatherer. <laughs> Not information. Gatherer, capability gatherer, you can always be at the top of your game. So it's skills. That's why sometimes people focus on, yeah, you need a mindset. Do we need a mindset? We do need a mindset. But once you have the mindset, you need the skill set to back it up. You can be the most positive thinker in the world, but if you can't do it, you can't execute. Or if you execute, you don't think, you don't reflect, you don't ponder, that's no good either. You got to think about it. How can I make it better? And you practice. And part of practice with what we do is when you do something and you can get feedback from the group or from me personally, and that's how you correct. It's very difficult for me to say to correct Jack if he's just doing it. Okay, now Jack, do it this way. Change the hand position. Do it again. Relax. How about this? Practice. Practice a few times. Come back. Okay, this is better, but what about this? Do it this way. Oh, okay, good. What about this angle? Oh, center of gravity, do it this way. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. Again and again and again. Will he get better? Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, and that's, that's Bruce, finger jabs, jabbing a pad. Again and again and again, you do the same thing again and again and again and again. And people will think, oh, it's just a finger jab. Okay, it's just a finger jab. <laughs> I, I'm, it wasn't even about the speed, it was about the power. Like you moved me back two, three feet. With just finger. Not a punch. That's like... Not a punch. Yeah. Next time we'll do it without the goggle, we'll see. <laughs> 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 you also had a different strategy. You came from lower or down. Ah. Outside of the field position. Like that guy. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Good, good. A very relaxed position. Very relaxed position. There's no, there's no a lot of, right, non-telegraphic motion. That's all principle. You can't even, why, why you go from here? Because here, that's too long. So from here to here is point A to point B. Shortest distance, right? And coming from here, because he's looking at my eyes, he doesn't see it, right? And then when you add your body weight into it, drop step and it's fast, right? Looks easy, <laughs> you can try. Why people don't succeed? I think number one is because they don't know what they want. Clarity is power. People don't get what they want in life or business because they don't know what they want. Lack of clarity. You might think they know. They might think, I want more money, I want more success, I want more free time, I want whatever. It's very, very vague if you think about it usually. Or they do know what they want and they don't want it bad enough. They're lazy. Mental or behavioral? Mental laziness or behavioral. They make excuses, they procrastinate. So think of, okay, I do know I want to do this, but ah oh man, I want to lose weight, or I don't want to practice, I don't have time, uh, this is too hard, or maybe I'm not good enough, or maybe I'll do it later, maybe I've got time, maybe there's no urgency, whatever it might be. You don't want it bad enough. 
they have low self-esteem. So they don't believe that they could do it. So they want it, they're trying, they're trying, but they have low self-esteem. And sometimes it could be masked as arrogance, but actually low self-esteem. That they, oh, I don't need to do that. I don't need to practice. Just like when I go to my CV, I don't need, this is too, this is too basic for me. I, it's not for me. I, I can do fancy stuff. I can do better. I'm fast. I'm young. I'm stronger. Don't want to do the basic stuff. And that's what happens too. Number, number four, they're dumb. They're just dumb. Are there dumb people out there? You better believe it. They are just dumb. And there are people who are dumb, and there are people who don't know they're dumb. And there are people who are dumb, and they think they're smart. All falls in the same category, though. Yeah, they're just dumb. They don't take the time to learn. They don't even know they need to learn. They don't take the time to reflect. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes you see that at VG too. You talk to them. No fucking clue. They actually have no fucking clue. And they don't even know they have no fucking clue. And they don't think there's a problem. But you guys would know when you talk with them. And that's why they're stuck. That's why people are stuck. Yeah. Yes. Is that like the guy, not to mention anyone in particular, but you know what I'm talking about, who came to the end of the EG, yeah. presented your pamphlet, and you're trying to explain to him about the Chinese market. And the yes. Market, and yeah. Right over his head. He, no idea. he has no idea. He wants to sell these jewelry to the Chinese market. And I was telling him a couple things. I could see, like, nobody's home. And I was, I'm lo I, look I was looking at him, OK? That's good five minutes waste of my fucking life. That's, that's good. And I said, OK, that's, I, that's a tone directly. I said, you know what? Whatever I say, whatever questions you have, you're not getting it. You're just not getting it. I think you need to work on whatever you got to work on. Because whatever I'm saying, I'm not getting through. So not good for you, not good for me, right? But feel free to come back. And I just leave it at that, right? Um, sometimes, I'm, sometimes I'm a little bit more patient. Sometimes I'm not. Depends on my mood. <laughs> Depends on my mood. Uh, but sometimes I feel sorry for them, too. Because I know their, their consciousness level is so low. And, but really, that five minute conversation is not enough to, to bring them up higher. It's hard. Number five, they don't take enough purposeful action. What kind of action? Purposeful. They never develop the habits and capabilities that are mandatory for long term success. So that's why, especially you guys have been with me for any length of time. Yes, you get the habit, you get how I think, but at the end of the day, you got to practice role play and develop the capabilities. You have the capabilities, you can do anything. That's what would go far, right? When you go on the real world, whatever you want to do in the future, it's capabilities. And not just capabilities developed from me, it could be anybody. Right? When you're a capability gatherer, you learn from everybody, but you, you practice. I think Stephen and I had a good talk about this, right? Stephen, you've been with me now close to what? Close to two, years. two years, right? But you can share your breakthrough. Like, okay. um, the most recent one? Yes. About, uh, about learning, about long -term. action, long term. Yeah, why didn't act? No action. So, Rather than focusing, focusing 10 steps ahead. Uh, for me, I had this habit of always just thinking about like, oh, what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life. That's something that maybe it's a way of wire, maybe it's something I train myself to do, who knows. But that's actually what was stopping me. I need to start thinking about, you know, instead of thinking step 100, think about one, two, three, four, five, and focus more on the short term goals and increase that incrementally, if that makes sense. So, that was one of the breakthroughs. That's what you're talking about right now. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe give one specific, let's say PMP, or in terms of making content okay, or whatever. Yeah. PM, just talk about PMP, right? I told Dan, I'm like, Dan, I'm not even going to aim to make a thousand videos. I'm just going to make 20 videos, <laughs> right? The best advice I ever got uh, from Desmond. Des is like, just make 20 videos. So that's just my goal. I don't think about anything else. I just think it's 20 videos. And then after 20 videos, I'm not going to jump to 100. I'm like, forget 100. After 20 videos, I'm just going to do 40. Right. You know, right. Another 20. And then after another 20, and then I do another 20, and another 20, you know, maybe I start pushing it up a little bit. But the point is, I'm not thinking about all the problems, everything that I'm going to do like 100 steps away. It's just 
because Stephen was thinking One about, yeah, well, I don't, I don't want to be a guru, maybe in the long term, I don't want to be a consultant, mm -hmm. or maybe that's not what I want, but you really want to be behind the scenes, I want to build a company, but then maybe I'll be stuck in doing this, right? Yeah, I was afraid to literally brand myself as copywriter forever, because I had, ever since day one, like even though it's, such, it's the most useful skill you could possibly have as a marketer, I never wanted to be an A-list copywriter, because I know Paris, I work with parents, I work with these A-listers, and these guys are, they, they have like 30 years experience. And I'm like, I don't want to be that guy. And these yeah. guys are crazy, but they're stuck as copywriters forever. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't want that, right? So yeah. I never put out PMP videos on copywriting or anything like that. And that was a big setback. So thank you, Dan, for helping me recognize this like limiting belief. And right now, I'm not even thinking that far. I'm just gonna do 20 videos. Yeah. And you know, do another 10 videos. That is what and you doing. notice, even at dinner and whatever time, Stephen is always the one with the notebook and he's always taking notes. He's a very dedicated student. My question to you is, is he learning in those two years or really does the learning start now? I would say both. Yeah. Because I know because I have the experience of the two years, Yes. now I can create content so easily. It's just like, there's just so much content and so much marketing experience that I can actually put out content on to build a PMP. So it wasn't a waste of time, but definitely I could have taken more consistent action earlier. That's def that's 100%. Yeah, but I just started doing this two years ago. <laughs> Way better. Yeah. So you guys need to just, just practice the same thing with Jack. Theory, think of in your head, what I'm going to do, what about that, do this, what if that happens. I said, Jack, how about just this. No, no, I'm thinking about another. How about just this? That's it, right? Awesome. I want to speak to that for a minute because if there's anyone in the room that's maybe like more of a visionary or a big thinker, like with big goals, uh, what I found for myself and for my clients is that sometimes when we make the goals so, so big and so, so far, it's actually a form of self sabotage because, like, like in our, our minds can't even like fathom it. Yeah. Right? So it's better to, it, it's good to have like these big goals, but it's better to chunk it down. Obviously, y'all know that, but just to be more aware of that, that you could be unconsciously sabotaging yourself by having big goals. And that hasn't always been, I was changed with Steven, same thing when I learned copywriting. At first, when in my early 20s, I wasn't thinking about oh my god, I'm going to be copywriter forever for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. This is going to be my career. I never thought about that. It was just, hey, I want to learn from Alan. He taught me to learn this. I just, okay, I do it. Just let my Sifu do this. Okay, I do it. And then as I get more proficient and I can charge people money, good money for it and I make a little bit of money. Again, I wasn't thinking about this is what I'm going to do. I just focus on doing the best. Doing what? The best. The best. At the moment, I give 100%. And then from then on, when I went into marketing, again, I wasn't thinking of I'm going to be a marketing consultant for the rest of my life. I just I would want to be the best consultant I could. And I found out I couldn't close on the phone, so I learned how to close on the phone. And I want to be the best closer that I could. And from there, I took the knowledge and learned internet marketing to be the best internet marketing guy that I could. And then transitioned to, even when I joined Toastmasters, I never, ever, ever thought of I'll be a speaker. I just had this fear of public speaking. I thought maybe I could get a little bit better, so I'm not as shy dealing with people. I could kind of express my opinions and feelings and emotions a little bit better. And, I, and then I, from there, six months later, people thought I was very good. Oh, maybe I could do this. And then I got one speaking gig, or, you know, did my first seminar with three people with my mom, right? Okay, and that's pretty cool. And again, I never even thought, oh, I'll be a seminar leader. It was just, oh, maybe I could do this. So it's a lot more, oh, I tried that, hmm, interesting. And then I try to master something, okay, that's pretty good. And, and try to keep gathering my capabilities. And over the, now over the years, after now over a decade, somewhat years, then I've, I have all these capabilities. But never thought of like, this is what I'll do. I never thought, I didn't, I don't know. Sorry, can you go back to what you said when you were saying the analogy with Stephen about the real He thought identity. that's his identity. Yeah. He thought, he copywriter, that's going to be my identity. Uh -huh. I look at that just, I, I simply look at that as my skill. True. That's yeah. it, right? So I'm like battling with that right now, with like building up so much, like, oh, this is who I have to be, and I'm like trying to reverse engineer it. So 
You're saying to basically experiment, practice, and gain skills. That's right. And that's the mindset. That's right. Because marketplace always pay for valuable skills. Well, it is, it is an art, right? There is a certain line. But I would like build it up so far and then like, man, am I supposed to be this like crazy entrepreneur and this and this? And the personal branding part, is it authentic to me? Will the marketplace accept my thing? Yeah. And all this I shit, right? Kyle? Um, another thing that uh, I've, I've found in the other people I work with that people don't succeed is when people are dabblers. So they try to be gain capabilities, but they don't commit enough to one capability to even get any sort of mastery. Mm -hmm. And then they get the shiny object syndrome. Well, That's it. Something else, and they're just constantly going from thing to thing to thing. Now, why? But why do people have shiny object syndrome? Because do you know what that, what that, where that comes from? Avoidance, the hard work. An issue with patience, also. Not even they, patience. They, they don't have the self-esteem or self-worth that they can. They don't believe the shit is gonna work. Yeah. So they just keep on looking for another magic pill, and then it just never gets. They're looking for the magic pill, yeah. and then I catch up with those people happier later. Same. They're still in the same rut. That's why they don't succeed, Kathy. Yeah. And I think it, I think a huge part of that is just like allowing yourself to fail. Yes. Like even like so, we, I actually we, we're currently doing videos like once a week. Yeah. Or like before, I was like, I mean, you can ask that in wherever it is. It's like yeah, I like that was the last thing I wanted to do was do videos, but now we've been regularly just doing them like literally once a week, and uh, like it's to the point now where like you can you can start to see progress, but. Yeah, but just allowing yourself not to do it perfectly. I mean, within a controlled risk, obviously you don't want to be like. Of course. You know, of course. Jenny? Yeah, I think for the identity, maybe like you own the identity, not the identity owns you. Like, I own the skill of doing copywriting, but I don't want copywriter to be me forever. Mm. This, I'm going to follow this name. So your skill should be owned under you. Yes. Not the other way around. Yes. Yeah. You own your skill set, you own the identity, right? Yeah, Cindy? Um, Yeah. I actually completely sucked. Yeah. Like I didn't know how to use technology, I didn't know yeah. how to edit, didn't yes. know how to do slide, I didn't know Any. the secret of YouTube. But I, what I have, because I'm so consistent with my products and I have great value in things that I mm. actually do, yeah. the stuff, the quality you put out, I have a, a feeling, like I, I have a fear of letting go mm. of that that somebody can drop it off and do it better. That's the same thing that I had issue with my, my cover box, just everything that I touch. There's nobody can do it better than I do. Yeah. And I don't know how, you know how you say be dedicated and things, but I need to let go so I can do the bigger things. And that's where I'm kind of struggling with. So it, it does come back and hurt me in a way because I am a product of my own, you know. It's, that's why the capability is not when you get to a certain point, you know you got to reinvent yourself. So I get to a certain point, yeah. I have to let go of who I was yeah. to go to the next level. And I have to let go, I've done this multiple times in my career, yeah. right? When I shut down my website conversionexpert.com with a big list, or when I fire all my corporate clients in one night, yeah. when I decided, no, I'm not gonna be just a copywriter anymore, I'm gonna write my own stuff and sell my own stuff, I call my clients and say, that's it, I don't write anymore, you're gone. There's no turning back, there's no maybe, there's no even transition. And that's way the way I've been doing it, I'm, I'm not saying that's the way you should do it, but I will let go and I go to the next thing. I will let go into the marketing when I was making a shitload of money, Matt would know, through information marketing, selling packages. Within like months, I say, no, that's not who I want to be for the rest of my life. I don't want to be a, a, a pitch man on, on, on the platform. And I can see also the industry is dying, right? Packages are dying. And that's why I, see, I, had to have the, I had the vision. I said, no, you know what? That's it. No more. Jenny knows. Overnight, no more travel speaking gig, no more pitching from the platform. Done. That was it. I had to. After I made the decision, then I find out, okay, maybe there are other business models I could explore, such as the equity income model and all these other things. How can I use my skill sets to build something else, right? That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And you build one on another. So what I do now would maybe different from what I do five years from now. Yeah, I mean all that. Exactly. Although it's all the switch, but I have honed my and further enhanced my skills through those failures, through those experience, right? Even business partner issue and all these things, right? So. 
really is capabilities. And I'm very fascinated. I'm always curious. And I love gathering and improving and, and tweaking just the capabilities. It, it's a very interesting experience for me. That's the game of business for me. Not so much I make X in mind. You have the capabilities, I can tell you. Money is easy. Because think of in the marketplace how many people have, cap have capabilities. They can perform, they're high performers. The marketplace will always pay a premium for that. No competition because people have all this bullshit. They don't know what they want, they don't want it bad enough, they have low self-esteem, they're dumb, and they don't take enough action. It's pretty simple, right? So, leave you with one quote. If you don't take time for the setup, you'll never have the conditions for the result. If you don't take the time for the setup, which is practicing, you'll never have the conditions for the result. It's all the setup. Dan, can you clarify what's the difference between the people who are always getting ready, get ready, to get ready, versus this? They get ready in their head. They're not getting ready actually for. Example, I, I, I told Jack, he was asking me all these questions, marketing, all this stuff. I said, Jack, what you're doing is you're trying to ask me how to swim, but you're on the land. And you're like, on the side of the pool, and you're, hey, Dan, should I wave my hand this way? Should I breathe like that? And what if I, I said, what if get in the fucking water, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? So I said, just get on the call. Just get on the fucking water. But he was asking, that's getting ready, getting ready, getting ready. He's been getting ready for months, right? And suddenly, yeah, and, 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 and suddenly he's got one sales call, right? One call. Now he's, okay, what should I do? Now, that's real. You're dealing with a real prospect, real problem, real situation, right? That's the difference. In reality, not, don't, re don't analyze it, just fucking do it. You do not analyze it, but, but you do, there's a fine line because you need to reflect. Because if you just keep taking action, that's why purposeful action, but if you just keep taking action, and that's why people keep working very hard, you end up burnout, exhaust, failure, and then you give up. That's not good either, right? They have an image of themselves of who they are. So, you know, hey, I'm this person who does great sales calls, and I close sales, mm. I work hard, blah, blah. But they think about who they are in that respect while they're sitting on the couch watching Netflix. Yeah. They're thinking about, okay, tomorrow I'm going to be that hard worker, I am that hard worker, but tomorrow I'm going to be that hard worker. Yeah. But I have, I'm having that thought while I'm sitting on the couch watching Netflix. Yeah. Or while I'm busy with other things in my life. Yeah. Tomorrow I'll get to it because that's who I am. Yeah. And they haven't been able to have that self awareness to say, you know what? I'm not. I'm just this fucking sloth sitting on this couch right now yeah. <laughs> watching Netflix. This is reality. Yeah. That is actual reality. Yeah. They're not. They're not making that connection. There is a gap. There's a disconnect. They think they're the ideal self, but they're not. And I find that when I talk to people that, yeah, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. I feel like that's kind of who they're associating themselves more to. Their ideal self rather than their realistic self. Yeah. 100%, 100%. And again, sometimes that could be a self-sabotage thing, that they set their goal or the ideal self so ideal that they don't take any action. Um, and that's why like, as I'm practicing and getting back into martial art training and stuff. I just focus on baby steps. Like, I was, the other day I was trying to do the fucking chin up and shit, right? Back then, at peak, I could do like 15 of these things. I try to do like one, I'm like, holy shit, this is so hard, right? It's hard. And I just, I just try to do one, just one. And then next day, I'm like, well, maybe and one and a half, still couldn't do it, one, right? And then I'm like, maybe I can cheat a bit, not cheat like one of those um, band, so lift my weight, I can do two or three, that's it. I'm just do one. And I try to do push up, I could do 10, I'm like, my arms hurts, my back hurts, all this shit, I'm getting old. Uh, but again, I uh, just do 10, I just do 10. And then as I, now going back into it for like a month now, speed, all of that, still there. It's there, reflex is there. Right? So it's coming back to me. And because I'm older now, I can now analyze and reflect even better of what I do. Versus when I was younger, just keep hitting the shit, keep practicing. <laughs> but now I'm like, no, I'm intelligent about it. Make sense? So take a couple minutes. Pair up and talk about what I just shared with you. Okay? <laughs>